Father, again, we just thank you that there is power in your word. And so once again, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you speak. We just step aside and we just say, have your way. Uh, Correct us where we need corrected. Encourage us where you can see, Lord, our hearts are needing encouragement. We just ask you to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, I want to talk about open doors. Uh, Several weeks ago, the Lord spoke through John Cook about an open door that uh, the Lord has placed over our church, and he referred to Revelation chapter 4 when he was talking about that. And as I was seeking the Lord on what he would say to us today, the Lord was reminding me about that, and I felt he had some more things to say about that, and so I want to share that with you this morning. When we talk about an open door, we're talking about access. When you go up to a door that's shut, you don't have access. When the door opens, you have access to everything that's on the other side. And so when you look at Revelation chapter 4, that open door represented access to heaven. Access to heaven. And that's one of the things that the Lord wants to share with us is that He is offering access to heaven. And I want to share some of the specifics of what I believe he's saying that we have access to. As believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit, you have access to spiritual authority. After Jesus was raised from the dead and came back, before he left, he told his disciples, I have been given authority in both heaven and earth. Jesus has All authority. All authority. And you, if you have received Him, if you have given your life over to Him, you are His son, you are His daughter. You have access. But here's the thing, and you need to hear this, okay? God loves you just like a father uh, or a mother loves their child, and they want to give you things, okay, that are good, but they don't want to give them to you when you can't handle them, okay? We live in a dangerous world, for instance, okay? Uh, And when you talk about physical weapons that can protect us, one of the physical weapons is guns, okay? That's a physical weapon that can protect us. That is a physical weapon that can protect you. It's a physical weapon that can protect others. In my other job, that's one of the things I carry. Why? for protection. But here's the thing. As a loving father, mother, you would never hand a loaded gun to a five-year-old. Hopefully. (laughs) Okay? Why would you not do that? Because they would hurt themselves. They would hurt others. It would not be something to protect. So I want you to hear this. Jesus, when He walked this earth, He carried spiritual weapons that protected and set people free. And as believers now, God wants to give those spiritual weapons to us. But here's the thing. We can't carry them as spiritual five-year-olds. We must grow. We must grow, okay, to the point that we can be responsible enough to be given these spiritual weapons, if you will. Now, I want to look at a passage this morning that shows us a peek into the life of Jesus and one of the things that the Father took Jesus through so that He could carry the spiritual weapons He did. Now, Jesus is fully God. But Scripture tells us that He was also fully man. And so therefore, there are things that the Father had to take Him through before He could carry out the spiritual authority that He was given. And the same is true for us. Now, I really hope that this is going to encourage some of you because there are things that you have gone through, there are things that you are going through, and it is for a purpose. It's hard, okay? It's not easy, but I want you to hear this. It's for a purpose. It's for a really good purpose that is not only for you, but it is for others. And as you hear this this morning, I believe God's intention is that it would encourage and motivate your heart 
to just continue to pursue Him, to know that He is allowing you to go through some of the struggles you are going through, not for bad reasons, but for good reasons, to bring you greater freedom and to also prepare you to be a vessel to bring others greater freedom. All right, the text I want to look at this morning is Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. And as you go to that, you're going to see that uh, this is talking about the temptations of Jesus. Now, if you're like me, you've probably heard several messages on the temptations of Jesus. And most of the messages are, are along something of the lines of, this is how you resist the enemy. Um, you know, this is how you use the Word of God to, res to resist the enemy. And that's all good stuff. That's not what we're going to be talking about this morning. This morning what we're going to be talking about is how God used this to prepare Jesus to carry the spiritual authority He did. Alright, beginning in verse 1. Now this is just after Jesus has been baptized. So this is the very beginning where He um, starts out and says, Okay, Father, I am Yours. And at that point, as He's baptized and He comes up, the Holy Spirit descends upon Him. He is filled with Holy Spirit, and now He's ready to go out and do His ministry. But before He goes out to do His ministry, the Lord, this Scripture is going to say, the Spirit takes Him away. He takes Him away to honestly a dark place where He is going to endure trial and temptation for 40 days. So in verse 1 it says, then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where He was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Now I want you to hear this. Holy Spirit led Jesus to a place where He would be tempted and He would undergo trial for 40 days. That's what the Holy Spirit did. Now, here's the thing. God is going to do very similar things in your life. And it has a purpose. I want you to know that this had a purpose in the life of Jesus. Scripture tells us in Hebrews that Jesus had to learn obedience. Okay? Did Jesus ever sin? No. Did He have to be developed? Yes. Why? Because He was fully human. So, unlike Jesus, we have sinned. We need His blood to wash those things away. But listen, even after the blood of Jesus washes those things away, you need to be developed. You're not ready to carry the spiritual weapons that God wants to give you. And so how is He going to develop you? He's going to take you through trials and temptations. Now, Scripture also teaches in James that God does not tempt us. Okay, So I want you to hear that clearly. He doesn't tempt you. But here's what He does. He takes you to places where He knows you're going to be tempted. Jesus was led to the wilderness by Holy Spirit, and God knew He was going to be tempted. Why did He lead Him there? Because through this, through resisting the temptation and enduring the trials, things were going to be developed in His life for Him to be able to carry spiritual authority. I want you to hear that, okay? Because God has a similar plan for you. Um, for those of you who've been following the Lord a while, the Lord has led you to places that were hard. And unlike Jesus, you didn't come through it unscathed. You didn't do it perfectly. You didn't resist the whole time. You gave in. And so because of that, some hurt was incurred. Now here's the thing. Here's what the enemy wants to do with that. The enemy wants you to be bitter. The enemy wants you to resent God. Because you're going to say to yourself, God led me there. And you're right. He didn't tempt you, but He led you there. And He had purposes for it. You know, it was so interesting. As I was 
preparing this message, I was just kind of leaning back and I look over at my desk and uh, in one of the cabinets on my desk, I have a card from the first ministry that Nikki and I were involved in. And you've heard me talk about this ministry numerous times and just the struggles and so on that I went through. And so as I looked at that card, I started thinking again. <laughs> I started replaying all the things. And I start thinking to myself, why this? Why that? And then I catch myself and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is probably a distraction from the enemy. He's trying to take me away from the message here. So I try to go back, but then it comes back and it's like it just won't leave. I go home. It's still there. I'm trying to sleep. I wake up. It's still there. It's just going. And so finally, I'm like, okay, Lord, I think there might be something here. I think you're trying to say something to me. And one of the things that the Lord spoke in that is that He was telling me that He led me there. Because that was what was always so confusing. It was so, there were so many trials there, and there were so many things that, that frustrated me, that I, places I saw the enemy working. But the thing was, I knew God led me there. I mean, there were clearly things that He had done to lead me there. And one of the things that He was saying to me is, yes, He led me there, and yes, it was hard, and it had a purpose. Its purpose was to develop and prepare my heart. So one of the first things I want to tell you this morning is, is that God wants to use you, okay? And for many of you, God led you to a place where you struggled, you failed, and now... The enemy wants you to be bitter. He wants you to doubt yourself. He wants you to doubt the goodness of God. And I just want to say to you that he had a plan for it. He had a plan for it, and it's really good. And we're going to get into some of that. So I do want to touch base on um, some of the temptations here. But I want to do it from a leadership perspective. Here's the thing. God was preparing Jesus to carry out unbelievable spiritual authority. Jesus was going to be casting out the demonic. He was going to be bringing healing to people where the enemy had brought illness. He was going to raise the dead. There were, he was going to, I mean, one of the things that we see is that when Jesus spoke, people said he was speaking with authority. It wasn't with cleverness of speech like Paul talks about. There was this authority. Now, how was all this going to come about? This was going to come about by a process that God was going to take him through. Okay, And so, there are three things that I want to look at. There are many ways that the enemy can tempt you, but there are three major ones that I want to look at that he takes Jesus through. The first one is this. Verse 3, the devil said to him, You are the Son of God. Tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, No, the Scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Now here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with eating. Okay? Nothing wrong with eating. Why was it that Jesus shouldn't have eaten then? And the other thing I want to say is this. This was not a matter of life and death. Okay? Jesus did not need to eat right then to live. Here's what this was a matter of. This was a matter of pleasure. That's what it's a matter of. It's a matter of pleasure. God did not want him to eat yet, and Jesus is coming in and saying, you're really hungry. You have every right to eat something right now. Why don't you just do it? Now, there are all kinds of things that the enemy tempts us with in this area. And I want to say this. God is not opposed to pleasure. He created it. He loves it when His kids enjoy pleasure, okay? He gave you pleasure to enjoy. But here's the thing. He says to you, don't partake in it when I'm saying not yet. You know, it's like the kid who doesn't want to wait. They just want to eat what they want whenever they want. And you know what? Some of you parents will let them do that. Some of you parents will let your kid eat nothing but sugar 24-7. Why? Because you love your kid and you want your kid to experience pleasure. Well, what's the problem with it? It's going to hurt them if that's all they ever do. Is God opposed to pleasure? No. But there's a time to wait to eat. And there's a time to eat things that are proper. And so what God was saying to him is, I want you to wait. 
And so here's the thing, and this is one of the things where the enemy trips us up. All through your life, you're going to have to do this. If you want to experience good things that come from this, you're going to have to withhold pleasure until God says it's okay. It's like that with food. I mean, food can be very pleasurable. But when you just eat whatever you want, whenever you want, what happens to those of us who are a little older? It starts to weigh you down, literally. And it's not so pleasurable after a while. And suddenly, instead of it being something that brings pleasure, it's something that brings slavery. And so that's why it's so important that even when we're like, well, why can't I eat right now? That we say, no, God's saying no to this pleasure. And it goes through all kinds of things. Anything that brings you pleasure, when God speaks to you specifically and says, I want you to hold off, okay? Or when His Word says, that's what we want to do. When you talk about fasting, for instance, what's fasting about? That's what Jesus was doing. It's withholding pleasure for a time. And is it fun? No! <laughs> it's absolutely not fun. So why would you do it? Well, the reason that you do it is because in it, here's what happens. We go against what our flesh wants and we say yes to God. And out of that, there is a stretching that happens and it enables us to carry more spiritual authority. So that we can bless others and it also blesses us. Okay, the next one he goes to. It says, Then devil took him up and revealed to him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. I will give you the glory of all these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What's this about? Here's the thing. Jesus was going to be given all the power. This is about power. First one was pleasure. This one's about power. Jesus was going to be given it all. What's Satan tempting him with? Once again, he's saying, but you can have it now. You don't have to wait until God says it's okay. Listen, God wants to give power to his kids, to those who can handle it. Why? Because that's how he blesses other people. Over and over, and we were talking about this in Sunday school, you in and of yourself cannot bless people. It is only through the power of God that you can truly bless people. And God wants to give you that power. But here's the thing. Once again, if your heart is not in a place where you can handle it, what's going to happen? You're like the five-year-old with a loaded gun. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt other people. And so God wants to prepare your heart. How's He going to do that? He's going to have you wait. He's going to have you wait and trust Him. He did it with King David. He anointed David king and had him wait for years and years and years while he's running for his life. What was he doing during that time? He was training David's heart so that he could handle the power. God does it for all of us. So here's the thing. Maybe God's put it on your heart um, and He's shown you some things that He wants to do through you, but it's not happening yet. And you're saying to yourself, well, why isn't it happening? And you're wanting to just make it happen? Here's the thing. If you go forward and you try to make it happen, it's not going to happen, okay? It's just going to be ugly. And here's the thing. I, I want you to hear this. God isn't holding out because He's not good. He's holding out till you're ready. And, and, and there's a prepara preparation in the waiting you know, the thing about temptation, another thing that Scripture says about temptation in Corinthians, it talks about it being a weight. And it does feel like a weight. You know that, that feeling you get when you want to do something that you know God's saying no to? And it's like this weight that's on you, and you're like, I just want to do it so I can get the weight off my back. You ever give in to that? Yeah, me too. There's five of us in here. I mean, I do. I, I just want to get the weight off my back. But then what happens? <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't really get the weight off my back. I just brought a bunch of more consequences, and it, it's really ugly. Hear this, okay? There's a purpose to this. God is developing something. And I want you to hear this because of this, okay? 
as you're experiencing temptation, number one, the enemy wants you to get mad at God and be like, oh, why is God letting me go through this? He has purposes, okay? As you're enduring and you're like, man, I just want to give in to this, listen to me. If you will hold out, God is wanting to give you greater spiritual authority. It's not something that you earn. It's something that he can entrust you with. James also says this. It says, talking about Elijah, it says the, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now it says a righteous person. Now God is the one that makes us righteous. We don't make ourselves righteous. It's not something we earn. But, but how does that come about? It comes about through us doing just what Jesus did, and that is when we're tempted and we want to give in and we don't understand why God's telling us to wait, we go ahead and wait anyway. And we resist. And here's what happens. As you do that, and you do it beyond the place that you think you can do it anymore, what happens is there's spiritual authority given to you. And, and, you know, right now in this moment, I'm just reminded of, I was, uh, Bell was asking me if I run earlier. I hate running. <laughs> but you know what? I do it. I do it because of the benefits that it brings me. And here's one of the things I've found in running. When I think about where I want to end up, if I focus on that point, it doesn't work for me. Because I want to give up. I'm like, that's a long ways down there. But here's what I've found. I found if I will focus on where I'm at and say, can I go one more step? Yeah. And then I say, can I go one more step? Yeah. And then eventually God takes me. And I, that may sound corny, but here's the deal. I'm, I'm serious. I've found this with temptation. Because I get, I get tired of being tempted. You know, one of the things that we notice in this passage is that it says that Jesus was tempted for the 40 days. And then it says it, he waited till he became hungry. And then he comes to him and he's like, hey, you want some food? Here's the thing about temptation. If it was just short little blips, it'd be okay. <laughs> but I've found I've been tempted my whole life and it doesn't go away. And I've found that it, it's not the intensity of it usually. It's the fact that it's gone on and on and on and on and on. That that's where the enemy gets me. But I've also found that when the Lord takes me through and I go just a step beyond where I thought I could go, God brings relief. And then he brings blessing. That's another thing that James says. It says that when we endure trials and temptation, God blesses us. What God is doing with Jesus, he's doing with you. He's taking you through things, okay? And it's for a purpose. There are three things that are here. Pleasure, power, that's the second one. And there's a third one here that are three big ones that really take us out from receiving spiritual authority. Third one, verse 9. The devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the Son of God, jump off for the Scriptures say. He will order his angels to protect and guard you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the Scriptures say, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Okay, what's that about? I mean, why is that tempting to go put yourself in a place where you could get hurt? Here's the deal. He's just spent 40 days out away from people. Okay? We, whether you want to admit it or not, all of us, and this is not a bad thing, all of us desire attention. You see it in everybody else. Do you see it in yourself? You desire attention. And it's not a bad thing. All of us do. Here's the thing. God has a certain way He wants to give it. And sometimes God says, no, not yet. But when we give in and we're like, well, I just really want attention and I'm going to find a way to get it, that's where we miss out on the things that God wants to give us. And we all have different ways going about this. Some of us are drama queens and kings. I mean, we all have things where we cry out to one another, okay? But I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I had a person that I, um, you know, had a Facebook request I friended last week. Their first three posts were all about, you know, 
I'm needing some attention, and I was like, okay, I can't follow this. This is going to drive me nuts. And we all need this, okay? Sometimes I cry out. I, I need some rescuing, and that's okay, okay? I, I want you to hear that. But sometimes, sometimes we make that our M.O., and that's what we really worship, and we just look for ways to get attention. And for some of us, we, you know, especially when you talk about um, pastor personalities, okay, some of us, when it comes to that, we're, we're all about looking for ways to get attention. And so rather than really ministering to people, we, you know, we try to build crowds. Uh, we try to, I mean, I've talked about this before. It, I mean, 99% of the people that I talk to outside of this church, they want to talk about numbers. And I hate it. Because it's not about that. But here's the thing. We're all tempted by that. We're tempted by pleasure. We're tempted by power. We're tempted by popularity. And all three of those are not bad when it's done God's way. But the enemy wants to come in and he wants to say, oh, you deserve that right now. Why do we resist? Because of this. Just after this, after Jesus successfully resisted, he goes out and he begins his ministry. And Holy Spirit worked through him powerfully. Through healing. Spiritually, through healing physically, through casting out the demonic, people were set free. All of that is God working through Jesus, who is also fully man. God can work through us in that way. But it is so crucial that each one of us resist. And if you're like me and you haven't resisted, because here's the thing, it took Jesus 40 days to get through this. Okay, I'm 40 years into this and I'm still failing. I'm not, I'm not there. But here's the good news. God isn't done with me yet. And God's not done with you yet. Again, God is speaking to us of an open door. God wants to give more spiritual authority. We've been seeing God move through us. Okay, Some of you have been praying for healings and you've seen it. Some of you have been praying for breakthroughs in people's lives that have been stagnant for years and years and years and years and years, and we've seen breakthrough recently. We are seeing it. God wants to do more. But here's, here's where our part comes in. Our part comes into resisting, okay? And you know what I'm talking about. What are the things, what are the trials that you're going through right now? What are the temptations that you're feeling, that you're frustrated about? There's a point to it. There's a point to it. Resist. Bring others into it. Share it with others. Have them praying with you. It's so crucial because of the good things that God wants to do. God wants to give you, God wants to give us greater spiritual authority. Because He wants to see His power go out so that others will come to Him. Because He has the authority, this world is rightfully His. It's not the enemy's. And He's looking for vessels that are surrendered. And as I speak this to you, I am speaking this to me because I need this motivation. I need it. Because I get tired of battling the temptations and I just want to roll over. I just want to be like, I'm just going to live out of the flesh for a while. I was listening to this country song recently. I've told you how I sometimes do that. And it was talking about how the devil in me has been bound up too long or something like that. And he's just like, I'm ready to just let it out. And I don't know about you, but I get to those places. But I want this. I, I want to see God move through me and through you, and He wants to. But it's not going to happen unless I go through. So let this encourage you. The temptations have purpose. Father, thank you um, that the events, the trials, the temptations that we go through, thank you that they're not just random events. Thank you that it's not you turning your back on us. 
Thank you that, Lord, it has real meaning and real purpose and it will turn out for the good of those who love you. And that's not just us, that's others as well. So I pray for myself and for each person in here that whatever it is that the enemy is bringing against us, that we will be encouraged uh, to say no, to reach out to others, to trust you, Lord, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it's really hard. And, and the enemy's telling us all kinds of lies that we will resist because there are good things that you're wanting to give to us, Lord. That our prayers would be powerful and effective. That when we speak, the enemy would flee. That when we speak, um, illness would be cured in your powerful name, Jesus. Not because of anything we've done to earn your love and your power, but simply because we have surrendered ourselves and we've chosen to trust in you. Lord, I pray that for each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would stand.